All right. Real needs and false needs. Mm. Well, you know, we, we talk about uh, needs and of course, when, uh, what would most people say? Well, what are your needs? Well, food, shelter, mm -hmm. relationship, you know, you have to exist in the world, right? But the guide, I think, sees it somewhat differently. Um, you know, not that you have a need for physical things. I think that in the path work, isn't it so that basically our spiritual reality creates our physical reality? So we can't put the cart before the horse. Um, the guide says, what are the real needs of an adult? They are self-expression, growth, <clears throat> development, reaching one's spiritual potential and everything that accrues from that. That means pleasure, love, fulfillment, good relationships, and a meaningful contribution to the great plan in which everyone has his or her task. It is a need to perceive one's inner growth. The lack of it brings unhappiness. So I think that what he's basically saying is that these are spiritual needs, or these are needs of, that pertain to our consciousness. And if we can satisfy these needs, we will also get the other things we need, the food, the shelter, the relationships. That seems, um, because, hi, Barbara. Because in the path work, obviously, um, and this, this lecture again says it, that we have to look within for the things that we need. We can't expect anyone else to give it to us. Yeah, I remember all these path work groups where somebody was yelling, give it to me, give it to me, <laughs> give it to me. No, I won't. <laughs> right. I mean, so that's a false need when you need somebody else to give it to you, to fulfill you, to make you happy. So that is a couple more people are showing up. Ellen and Kevin. Yeah. You know, um, Alan, yes. it was in the reminder email that just came today. When you click the link, it takes you to YouTube for some reason. Yeah, I screwed up. Oh, oh, well, okay. I just, was there another link somewhere else? Maybe I, I'm just thinking maybe some people were having trouble finding it. I don't know what I did wrong. Oh. <laughs> that was very funny. You were sent, the link was to the subway, subway workers video. That, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. But the, but the meeting ID is in the email. So I, I copied it. <laughs> Yeah, it took me a while to kind of like, I was like looking for another link and then I realized I could just go back to the email and look well, for I do something. work for the Transit Union. I, 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 just, I just, I figured that you <laughs> had some connection with Transit. Yeah, we are without a contract right now. So, you know, we're, trying, <laughs> we're trying to like, you know, mix it up with the MTA a little bit. But mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> they better resolve. Well, so... Uh, yeah, real needs and false needs, back to work. Um, in the beginning of the lecture, you know, the guide always talks about the promise that, that we're all hoping to receive, that we're where we're all going. It, very interesting in this, in the beginning, he says, most human beings are not yet aware of the immense spiritual potentials and powers they have. Now, what do I mean when I say spiritual potentials and powers? I mean that these powers transcend by far the human capacity is considered normal in your sphere of being. Well, that sounds pretty inspiring, right? That we have vast powers that we're not aware of. And then the guy talks about waking up. That's like a theme in this lecture. He says, the next paragraph, he says, um, If the consciousness is still in a state of half asleep, half sleep, which is always connected with destructive attitudes such as self-will, pride, fear, greed, envy, malice, cruelty, spite, and selfishness. The majority of human beings find themselves approximately 90% asleep and only 10% awake. 
to what exists in the world around them and within themselves. That's reassuring. That's reassuring, right, Joel? Um, <laughs> in the third paragraph, awakening the spiritual potentials also involves access to the ever-present forces of life, all of which exist within and around you. Um, page three, the middle of page. <clears throat> your state of numbness about your past feelings numbs you to similar present experiences unless and until you make a real commitment and a real effort to awaken yourself, no matter how painful this may seem at first. So there's a theme in the lecture about awakening ourselves, waking up. And um, that has to do to get to the core of the lecture with becoming aware of our childhood frustrations and the false needs that were formed in childhood, the things that we believed we had to have as children, as infants, that we weren't able to get. We have to, I think the overriding message of the lecture, if there is one, is that we have to awaken to our experiences where our needs were not met and see how those experiences still live in our day-to-day day -day actions, mm -hmm. how they still exist right now in our lives. And he makes a distinction between the real and false needs. Um, and I think there's two points about that that I can make. One is that Real needs can be fulfilled and false needs cannot be fulfilled. False needs never get satisfied. Real needs can be satisfied. Also another distinction, which is that when you don't fulfill false need, you feel what he calls a hard pain. In other words, it's something hard, an obstacle, makes you angry, you're not getting what you want, and it's, it's just very hard and rough. As con a contrast to that, the real need, when you don't fulfill a real need, you feel a soft pain. In other words, it's because the essence of the need, it will be fulfilled one way or another, but maybe not now. And when you realize it won't be fulfilled, if you can experience that need, the real need, and know that, it will be fulfilled one way or another, maybe not the way you think it will be, but it will be fulfilled in one way or another. You feel a soft pain that, well, it's okay. I can handle it. Another part of the lecture, of course, he talks about how difficult it is to reconcile yourself to the fact that you have to feel some pain. People don't wanna feel pain. So if you just shy away from feeling any pain, then you can't feel the soft pain. But if you feel the soft pain, then you can eventually get that need fulfilled. Stop me if uh, there's a question. Is, is, is the, you talk about soft pain, but, yes. but at the same time, you talk about the uh, kind of like real need that is, is probably going to be fulfilled. But like you said, who can guarantee that? Right. It, it, you know, it, we're probably it's kind of very tricky because we all know that we have limitations and as much as we want to aspire to something, maybe we would never be able to fulfill that. Right. Some, some, right. some of the injuries right. that we have maybe will never be healed. Right, right. I, I have to agree with that. But then you have to also look at the longer spiritual perspective of this incarnation or the next incarnation. <clears throat> um, certainly everybody doesn't get everything they want in this life. That, that's certainly absolutely true. So the guide says, page four, when people begin to assume true self-responsibility, they will gradually also cease to wait for the good feelings to come from outside. So it kind of seems like you're kind of giving up on getting things from other people. The guide kind of says, you don't really need to, you don't need to demand anything from anyone else. You have the ability to create your own happiness yourself. 
Yeah, which Alan, I just want to add one thing. It doesn't mean to be pain free. So when I think in this lecture, what brings it really strongly for me was the recognition that that happiness or that fulfillment that the guide speaks of is not about being painless. <laughs> it's, it's about living in acceptance, even if there is pain, or right. living through that and taking ownership for a given item. Um, or your, your portion of that given item, not so that you have the free, easy, clear life that's, you know, my ties on the beach or anything, but rather that you're, you know, that you're owning up to what is occurring um, and your, your role in it instead of blaming other people. And then that, that I think is what is stated sort of as, uh, you know, as, as, as fulfilling the real need, which is that inner uh, that inner uh, self-expression, growth, development, reaching uh, potential. Right, like life contains both pleasure and pain. Yeah. If you accept that, it's all pleasure. That's right, yeah. Fate. Exactly. You have to accept, right. All right, right. so let's just, uh, I'll go on with my summary here. Good feelings do not come, have to come from the outside. The self-responsible person doesn't wait for that. Okay. The real needs of an adult. I ran through them. Pleasure, love, fulfillment, good relationships, a meaningful contribution to the great plan in which everyone has his or her task. So, but the false needs, the false needs he says become, come from childhood where the child was denied certain kinds of fulfillment that it desperately wanted. A child needs to be taken care of, needs solely to receive care, nursing, good feelings, attention, and appreciation of its own uniqueness. If these needs are not met, if these needs are not fulfilled, the child will suffer. So I'm kind of wondering whether these are the only needs the child has or whether there are more, whether there are more needs that the child has that are not fulfilled. Can, but, you, can you repeat this? The, here's the list. Yeah. A child needs to be taken care of, needs solely to receive care, nursing, good feelings, attention, and appreciation of its own uniqueness. Well, isn't it impossible since we have a little self for all of our needs to be met, right? So if the mom takes me for ice cream, right? I pick exactly what I want. I'm four years old, five years old. And then I say, I want another one. Well, you just had, right? You just had your. That's the false needs. See, that's the false needs can never be fulfilled, but the real needs can. Oh. That's the distinction. Oh. Okay. Wanting, you know, for a kid, you know, you he, he asks for a chocolate ice cream cone, you give him, and he goes, "I don't want this. I want strawberry." That's a. It's not a real need. But isn't 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 it that the need is also related to the level of awareness that yes. that that? So you know, it's very like you said. Yes. And a child need is a very different than an adult need. That's yeah. why, the, so for the child, it's the war. You know, if he doesn't get the ice cream, it's, right. it's, it's a crushing, it's, it's a, it's, so for him, it's, yeah. that's why. So, and it's very tricky because for him is, you know, and later on he's carrying it as a real need while later on he doesn't realize that he has a bigger capacity to build it as a false need. Right. But, but we, you know, by the time we understand that, we sort of become, we still have the child in, within us, yes. that it is for us, it's, it's, it's a real need, while we know as an adult it's false need, but in our perception, it's, right. it's not a challenge. Right. Well, that, but that's not exactly true. I mean, a child, the child has some sense of what's a real need. This is where, you know, this is, I mean, I think it's really important to, like, there are very clear, like, and there's so much, so much psychology now it's like there are very clear things that children really need that are really important needs and that list is close but i'm sure there's you know like to, it, I, I think a child needs to have its feelings 
um, labeled. Child needs to be li listened to. That presence. I mean, that's you know, it, it's a little bit included there. I, I just think it's important to. Child needs also a lot of expression. You know, you need to sure they need to this child. You know, caress it. You know, I mean, physical, physical. Yes, that's right. Touch it. Physical, physical needs, touch. Emotional needs that also that's important for the child. Well, can too. anyone think of any false needs that they have now? Oh yeah, there's so many of them. You got, one, you got <laughs> yeah. a false need. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think I, another I, question I, before you, but you really answer. But the isn't the lecture also saying that false needs arise out of the process of the real needs not being met? That the false, I think it's alluding to that in the lecture. It says that it says a, yes. something that's a real need at yes. one stage becomes a false need. Right. Yeah, because I mean, those those needs, needs that the child has are real needs, real needs, but they but some of the process of them not being heard has the child become so distressed. Yes, that they replace they replace the need for false things because they're concrete. So they so like the ice cream, right? It's like, well, the child didn't get some other need met, but the ice cream feels like it's going to replace it. Right. That, that's and right. I think that's right. In essence, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I was saying that, you know, like on page three, we see that the guy said here in the last uh, one, two, three, four, uh, actually the third paragraph where he says, and this is very important in that, that you know, I think we have all had so many uh, uh, false needs because the, the way he says here is the, the negation of your real needs creates your false, false needs. This is tremendously important to observe. So then if that's the case, I mean, every time we don't, like you were saying, uh, like I think it was earlier, uh, when you uh, negate these uh, real needs and you uh, try, you know, seeking to avoid feeling that soft pain, right away, a false need is created there because then you want you suppress that real need and then you try to uh, replace it, you know, wanting the, the world or others to, to fulfill it for you. You know what I mean? So, so you create, we all have so many false needs because uh, it's, it's not easy to feel that pain, even though you, we can call it soft pain, but it's not so soft when you have to really feel it. You know, there's this anger, uh, as your book talks about, uh, boxes here about the anger. When you have this anger and you just really uh, sit with it and, and feel it and confront it, you know, that's difficult. It's so much easier to just Law and you know start cursing or yelling or blaming someone else, right? Rather than just like, wait a minute, just like catching yourself. And as the guy says here, observe it, observe yourself feeling these feelings. Go through that pain, go through that you know that discomfort and and, and you know the the, the the pain that you feel in, in in interacting with that anger, you know. So uh, every time the way I see it, the way I understand it, every time we negate you know, the false, the real need, we create a false need, or maybe even more than one, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I want to uh, mention something else. Uh, Guy says later on, uh, legitimate needs, this is page five, Legitimate needs can be fulfilled only to the degree you experience your original feelings and your residual feelings of the past. This means you discover and give up the false needs that have accrued from denying the pain of the original unfulfillment. Let yourself go into the child state and allow the irrational, destructive reactions of the child in you to express themselves now. Now, what Alex yes. was saying, express themselves, we mean, you know, I'll take it from what she's saying. She, allow yourself to feel them. Right, allow yourself to feel them. Not, and not without acting out. out. Another, uh, right, and, and very re relating to that, he says, um, page seven, you fear, my friends, to go all the way into yourself is much less of your fear, my friends, to go all the way into yourself is much less due to the real pain 
Soft pain due to unfulfilled real needs may momentarily result in forceful expressions of crying and yelling or of writhing or of writhing and hitting. But there is a safe inner ground due to the absence of venomous force and currents that sends a message of vengeance into the world. So, you know, what this raises the issue of is physical expression of feelings, which is something that core energetics deals with. In other words, when he says, um, writhing and hitting, crying and yelling, <laughs> obviously, that's not something you do in a kind of discussion about, about these things. You have to experience those emotions in a situation where you can vent them, right? And we did that a lot in the path work a lot. And in the core energetic work, that's what we do. You know, we experience the feelings and we're able to, to hit things and, and experience the anger and experience the pain. And so, I mean, I think that's an important part of the process. You, you cannot just intellectually talk about something, right? You have to actually go through the feelings, which means that sometimes you have a visceral experience of those feelings, right? So that's a limitation that we have in a group like this, that we can't really do that. Um, and then he talks about, if you don't do that, and I think this is a fair connection to make, if you don't do that, then you experience a venomous forcing current that sends a message of vengeance into the world. The mellow sadness of real pain and real needs dissolves into its own streamings. But on the other hand, the unbearable, hard, and dangerous experience of pain is due to the false need that says, quote, you must give me what I need, what I insist upon. If you do not, I will perish with a vengeance. Now, that's an interesting thing to say, right? I will perish with a vengeance. Mm -hmm. I mean, this whole thing about, okay, mommy, I'm going to hold my breath until I die, right? Or like, okay, uh, goodbye, cruel world. I mean, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. going to tie myself to the railroad tracks and say, you know, okay, you guys are going to pay. Now, this is, you know, Right? You'll be sorry, You'll be sorry when I'm yeah. dead. Yeah. Yeah. That is, if, if I will perish with a vengeance. Right? So apparently, that is where you get to if you let the false needs dominate your life. I will perish with a vengeance. So, what are you doing now? In, in the group, that in your business, that you really have to, you're angry. You cannot express it. The way it is, you cannot just hit the pillow. It's what what do you do? Yeah, well, that's a, that's an interesting question, right? I mean, what the guide the guide invites us to make all these things conscious, but what do you do when you make them conscious and you have these feelings? You know, well, I can. What? Well, go ahead, go ahead, Teresa. I was going to say that's you know I signed up for that five year program in Virginia, and this is what we did. Okay, let me let me pass yeah, this on. So. The, the transfer they call it the transformation program and yeah that i did in virginia at seven oaks with the the paper group out there and this is this is what we did so we met four times a year i guess it was four or five times a year every few months and we would go from wednesday to sunday and we would have discussions uh groups so you know most of us came the lecture also talks about how most people start the path work because something's wrong. wrong. It's not with a positive intention. It's with, I want to make this negative thing go away. So we all came with that <laughs> pretty much like, I don't know why, but I hate this person in my life and I can't you know, live anymore that way. So most of us had stuff like that and we would try to bring it down to the original feeling it's hard to do though, because you have to make all these little connections and sometimes it takes a long time. And that's why the program was five years. I remember when I shared that with this group, everyone was like five years, You're crazy, that's a long time. You know, it's a big commitment to make, but like you chip away at it and you find little threads. And if you can connect it all together, I, I experienced an unbelievable transformation just doing this emotional work because I was so repressed, you know, I was not allowed to express emotions when I came in and they give you permission to have that temper tantrum you need to have, or, you know, to really feel that pain at a deeper level. And I think 
the, um, you know, that's the idea of getting a helper, which the guide talks about getting, you know, working with a helper. You can do it one-on-one -on -one like that. But I also think having somebody witness you, like if you're doing it by yourself, you can find those feelings and express them. But having a witness is really, I think, a big part of it. For me, anyway, that's just my experience. So, um, yeah, I love this lecture because I, you know, I... I found this lecture in 1992 and I just, so much of it now I remember like that I had things I hadn't heard before. The idea, the whole idea of a false meter was like great to me. Back then, so. I wanted to, I had another thought about what you're talking about here. I, I keep thinking I wish Marion was here because I have a feeling what this, this part of the lecture is connecting to the, don't, don't they use the five defense types of um masochist yeah you mean in core energetics yeah in core energetics yeah because i'm thinking that the, the response like she's describing a um a dot perish with a vengeance like that the way that we respond to uh to the needs not being met is different depending on what you're if you have a more passive personality type or a more aggressive personality type so mm -hmm. <laughs> like Marion, where are you? I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> something that yeah, I yeah, yeah. No, I, I think you're absolutely right because, I mean, you know about this, right, yeah. Teresa? Let me yeah. put Teresa back on here with this. Because yeah, was, that's why I was the one I'm jumping yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Marion, Marion was really connected to that part of the teachings about the three personality types, right? It's, I think it's five, isn't it? Five? Then there are the five character structures. Five, five, okay. yeah, right, and then the defense types that go with it. I, I was thinking of reason, will, emotion. Like, I know will, because I'm will. His anger is the uh, cover emotion for pain. And then the reason type is withdrawal, is the defense. And the uh, reason, will, emotion. The emotion type is, is submission, right? So Marion used to talk about that all the time. But those are the defense. Those are not the real emotion, right? Those are the cover up the real emotion, right? So the anger is covering up the pain that you're, you know, if you're a will type and you don't get what you want, the pain of, you know, not getting what you want <laughs> turns into anger as a defense. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, so, so the five personality types, the, it's a, uh rigid schizoid All right those are character uh, structures right but they they the to, structures, they, right. They well, right. and right how to deal with the, those needs coming up too like the you know this describing how that it connects it connects with the reason with the reason different the ways mind. that the personality that the different character structures in other words the different ways that you hold your musculature and that your body is re reflect exactly. how you deal if you deal with emotions I believe, and I'm not, I don't know a lot about core energetics in this theory, but that the different, the different personality, the different character structures, each one responds differently to stress and to crisis and to anger and things like that. And I think they're rigid, oral, masochistic, yeah. um, schizoid, schizoid. Schizoid. and um, I think I was rigid, which is the best one, because I don't want to be like schizoid. <laughs> <laughs> Take, take rigid. That's good. We'll take it. <laughs> None of them are good. That's the best one. So, Tracy, do you want to speak about this dilemma, like how we deal with the feelings that come up? Um, what do you think? I'm not sure what you're asking. I mean, I'm just saying, like, okay, given the fact that we have to experience and invent these feelings, right. that the false needs, we have to, the guide says we have to kind of let them out. How do you do that? I mean, would you? physically energetically do you do it or do oh you... yeah i just let myself feel it mm -hmm. that, so whatever whatever i feel i just i don't try to explain it away justify it away dispel it but you know put it off under somebody else <clears throat> explain i just like just i just feel it and little by little it will dissipate sometimes more quickly than others depending on you know what's happened or hasn't happened so that's how i deal with it and then um it just sort of transcended yeah and you come through almost through it and you're on the other side looking back and you know you still maybe will remember something that painful but it doesn't have that grab at least for me 
doesn't have to be There is an assumption, but basically, let's say if we are in a business setting or even whatever it is, we we have to be proper. Yeah. Right. And and as if, but if you if you have that safe environment, then you can do whatever you want to do and express it fully. But what happens when when it's not you don't have that up, you know possibility? Uh, but at the feeling level, you don't have to act it out, right? Like you can feel the pain, and your body yes feels that, and you feel it go through mm -hmm. you, and even the anger, yeah, whatever it is, you can allow. But you yourself. don't have to talk about it or act on it, right? Exactly, and I, and I think the training is required to to, to help us yes. to be in that state of mind. Yeah, it's more probably a lot of prevention and work yeah. to get to that point. Right. And once so, once you know that you trust yourself to that you're not going to act on it, you just can sit with it. Right? Meditation, I think that's one of the one of the benefits of meditation, right? Is that that, that we can connect with our observer self, right? Our awareness, our our presence, and then when we're whatever we're feeling, we can we can focus on our breath and observe what we're feeling. So the other day I had, and I, and no, no, Alan, are we talking about sensations or emotions or both? Emotions. Well, maybe both. I mean, the emotions is money. That's partially in the body. So it could be sensations. It, could, it, it has, it has sense. some elements. Yeah, we were, we were struggling with some things that happened or didn't happen. And several days later, I noticed that I had a lot of um, just a sensation of discomfort in my body. It wasn't it wasn't anything that I had really identified before, but but I felt it, you know, like you know, very present throughout my body. And so I just observed it, you know, I just was breathing and tried to say, you know, where, where are you feeling it? What, what's the care, what are the characteristics? I thought maybe it was, you know, something that was unresolved, unresolved thoughts that were manifesting physically, but I just stayed present, allowed myself to feel it. And it wasn't trying to distract myself or push it away. And then, and then gradually it dissipated. Although it did, it did uh, come back uh, several times. Um, so I just sat with it and you know, tried to see what it, it was, might be coming from. Looking, you know, was there something in the past, my childhood, that m might pop into my into my uh, mind, a picture. So, so the breathing and just observing helped me to get through but, but, it. But there's really two things going on here because what 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 Joel's talking about, I know what he's talking about because I had the same thing. <laughs> one of the one of the family things. That's not a need as much as it is. A, 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 you know, we felt hurt. So th there there there, are people all, will do things to hurt you. There's no question about that. I mean. You're not going to get out of this life without, you know, and most of the time it's inadvertent. Most people aren't trying to, they're just being themselves. They're addressing their own needs. And in doing that, they overlook yours and you can be hurt. So w one level is, well, how do you deal with those feelings, those emotions? And and I do the same thing that Joel was describing. I just, you know, I just let myself feel it. Okay. I'm hurt. I'm very hurt. And, um, it slowly but surely it will just dissipate the other thing is needs so that i think the, the essence of this lecture is more about how are we addressing our real needs and what happens if we don't which is as you summed up five minutes ago then it's going to create a false need so then now the false need is, is one that's going to be you know very rigid like you said like i have to have this i have to have this But that comes from not allowing yourself, okay, we're not, I had this need, I didn't get what I wanted this weekend, but okay, <laughs> you know, okay. But I didn't try to replace it with something else or, or you know, it's just like, I, I, 
And they were talking about our daughter, you know, it, it was Mother's Day and she didn't show up because she was doing what she wanted to do. And it was painful for both of us that, you know, a, a, our only daughter who lives 12 minutes away couldn't stop by, you know, on Mother's Day at all. So that was disappointing for both of us. And I had my feelings hurt. He had his feelings hurt probably more for me than, you know, it was Mother's Day. But that's not, that's, I did, that's, you know, wanting the attention or the recognition or whatever, whatever on, on from somebody that you love, your child, you know, on, on Mother's Day or whatever. Okay. I mean, you know, but it, it like you described, that's really a, like a soft sort of disappointment. I was disappointed. I wish I had, could, I wish I had seen her. I'm sorry that she was in a space where she couldn't give me that, that she needed to take care of herself. And I understand why then that's all has to do with, you know, her business and what she's going through but but then if i said well you know uh, you know then i have to have you know whatever on sunday that becomes a false need that's you're just setting up a like a fault let's like a don quixote you know battling the windmill you know and the windmill isn't, isn't the enemy it's, it's, not, it's inside of us the enemy is inside so i think that's what the lecture is more getting at not how do we deal with disappointment which is inevitable and and yeah, I think but how do we deal yeah. with our needs mm -hmm. and not to not to try to explain them away or suppress them or say, oh, I don't really need. No, I really did want my to see my daughter on Mother's Day. There's no explaining that one away. You know, it's like, oh, well, she's too busy. No, I really I had that need. I would, you know, if she lives hours away, maybe that's different. If she lives 12 minutes away, she couldn't find five minutes to come you know, be with me on Mother's Day. That was painful, it was hurtful. But I didn't try to suppress it or or substitute it for something else because I could go away. I could say, well, in that case, then I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll I'll just get everything that I need from my son who was there. You know, well, no, that's not going to replace my need to see my daughter. You know, I still have that need. So you just have to say, okay, you know, and and let it pass through you, observe it, feel it. It, it doesn't feel good. It's painful. It was pain. It was very painful. But it's starting to be painful now, somewhat. Just me telling you about it, but not 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 so much that I can't go on. But I mean, I can feel it, you know, rising up in me. The disappointment that I felt, the pain that I felt. Um, so I think I'm 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 okay. I'm, I'm like going up. Who, who is? Uh, that's Jordan. Okay, that's Jordan. Hi, Jordan. <laughs> I want to um, when you had your head to the side. So I think what you're saying is that if we ignore our real needs, in other words, are you kind of saying that there's a competition between the real and the false needs? That depending on where we put our energies, are we going to put our energies in the real needs or are we going to put our energies in the false needs? Well, it's, I mean, I think what we, it's like, a, it's almost like a pseudo solution. It's like, you can't get what you want. So then you try to substitute something else to like, but you, it's not gonna. It's not gonna help. It's not gonna help. Right. It, it, it's like pain and suffering. Though. You know, pain. You you have to experience like you experienced that with your daughter. Yes. But and it's yes. There is a need that is unfulfilled. It's very painful. Yes. But if you're gonna try to force her, no. If you just say, oh, she's a bad daughter, right. and so on and so forth, then you make it worse, and yes. then you're getting into the false need. Yes. yes. So, so, so you stay with uh, the pain. Right. Yes. Yeah. And right. And yeah, let it yeah. go and try to do the best you can yeah. to yeah. to 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 influence her, or maybe to do what what is within your power. Yeah. So, so it's also the ability of what you have yeah. and the people around you. But then. You let go in the end. Yeah. You realize that you cannot get it, but the acceptance right. of it, I think that's powerful. And right, right. And, and so much of it is the, the thoughts that we have that start running. Stories, right? Yeah. In response to the event. Yeah. So she she yeah. wasn't there, right? So then I'm I'm like, well, he's not. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. What are you saying, Joe? I will. That's um, it. You're done. Yeah. I, I said, 
it's the thought so she doesn't show up right and it's like you know what who the is she what she's in, yeah 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 what the fuck she's the <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then i start to you know listen to what i'm saying to myself and i'm making it worse i'm making myself feel worse yeah. it's just a fact that she was not there yes. then, yeah i think that it's characteristic of these false needs to not be in the moment yeah. right yeah. because you know like you could you could imagine okay i'm very disappointed she does this nice little <clears throat> You gotta take me out to a really nice dinner, you know, make up to make up for this. And so I say, I want to go to you know X Y Z restaurant because that's my favorite restaurant up in Maypac. And since I can't have my daughter, my daughter's too busy and whatever, just stop by and get her mom five minutes of your cookie. We got to go to this fancy restaurant, and then we go and I can't get in because it's it's full. I'm sorry, we can't. We're not taking walk-ins. It's Mother's Day. The restaurant's packed. Now I'm like. <laughs> because that's a false thing. I don't need to get into yeah. it. So I think that is what the, 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 the guy is saying yeah. about how the false need is like rigid. It's like, hey, man, I'm, let me, don't you have a table? I need, I need a table. I need to be let into this restaurant. Whereas the real need, which we can have some, you know, food recognition, <laughs> you know, some time with, with my, you know, five, whatever, some, some, acknowledgement right. you know that it was mother's day that my daughter you know is interested in me which i know she is i mean ironically no it has nothing to do with me it's everything to do with her she's in a, not in a good space and she can't she can't extend right now she, she's in a you know a space you know where she's pulling in and just dealing with her own her own well, she's gonna stop which is everybody goes through those periods i'm the same way if i'm not in a good space i don't want to have guests i don't want to be with other people. I want to pull in and be by myself, lick my wounds, you know. Um, and it's not about whoever I might not want to be right then. It's all about me. I'm not in a space where I can be around other people because I'm in pain. I'm hurting. So she, that's that's her situation right now. So she couldn't transcend that sort of get over herself just because it's mother. You know, I'm a mother. She just couldn't do it. So if I try to make that all about, if I don't realize that that's not all about me, that there's other things going on here, and I try to substitute what is probably a pretty, your mother, probably a pretty normal desire to have myself. Well, I would, I would just come so I think it's still a false need that the, that the daughter acknowledge you on money. Yeah. Right. It's not as false as saying I have to go into a restaurant, you know, but it's not a real meat. That's true. The real meat is broader. Right. Like that I'm in in a in I'm in relationship with my daughter that she loves me and that we have a loving yeah, dad that you understand that yes i'm not evil yes and that doesn't right exactly so, exactly and that's see that and so that's where you just have to let that pain go through you, you just don't, don't make it worse by you know don't start flailing against it you're just going to make it worse you let it let it and it will it does have i mean it took a couple days i was in pretty pretty I was pretty sad for a couple of days, but then I'm not sad now. Okay, he on page seven. He's I yeah. Go to... ahead, Doc. Did you want to say something, Ellen? I was just going to say, and you're pointing to how the importance with what the lecture is saying of pinpointing what the real need is is being in touch. That when all this other stuff is happening, it's like going back to like. Teresa, right, that was Teresa who was talking yes. to saying, you know, that what what the real need is, and 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 um, and um, forgetting people's names, and Tracy, and Tracy was like, oh yeah, right. It's like then you start to be able to connect, to be able to to be clear about you know what what is creating the flailing, when when you really you know. So it's like keep go, keeping going back. To what is that? What is the real need? And, and also, you're also showing how it helps you then to think of the other person's real need as opposed to what their, um, which actually interestingly is a concept from uh, um, nonviolent communication. Marshall Rosenberg is, 
you know, realizing that all conflict comes from, you know, the, uh, realizing that the other party has a need. It's like this whole key of what is the real need. Right. Hey, oh, if, yeah. if, if I can interject something. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, first of all, I love this conversation. It is wonderful. Um, I, one of the things that struck me, there's two points that struck me. Um, one is, uh, I think the real need goes as it goes through the permutations and becomes a false need. That's a kind of escalation. So if we go back to the child with the ice cream cone um, and he doesn't get his ice cream cone that his second ice cream cone, the next day he says, well, I want two, you know, or you don't love me because you're not buying me two. That's uh, forming a demand by escalating into other places that have no bearing on what the real issue is, the disappointment of um, not being heard or whatever it is. And, and that brought me to another point. Um, and I apologize, I can't remember the woman's name who was talking about TP. Um, Teresa. 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 Um, I think the, the one of the points that's important is to be able to be to be able to have that witness be non-judgmental and have that uh, presence of I don't know if it's grace or love or holding while you go through whatever the event is and have those feelings, but being able to come out the other side and know that you haven't been rejected at all, that people love you and they can hear you and see you. And when you come out the other side, you can see that you have been held and heard and no one is running away from you. And maybe those two things, if you don't have those, if you don't have that when you're thinking about a real need, uh, for example, the kid, the mother could have said, you're going to get fat. That's a form of rejection. And the kid is then shamed. And that can escalate, right? I'm just thinking about how things can get out of control. But um, the, and maybe that's how false needs get promoted because we have an experience of escalation. I demand and I have a shame because I, you know, I'm not being heard and seen and I'm not being feeling that being held part. I'm done. <laughs> Thanks, George. Um, I like to say something. The, um, back to child's needs. Um, it took me a little while, but I got, cause I knew something was missing there and safety. Um, you know, felt like a real big, important need. And I just experienced, and it's something that um, often <clears throat> when I'm coming from the place of the child is, is the real need. And it becomes a false need when I'm projecting that onto my my husband. Like you know, I don't feel safe with him. It's not you know the right situation. But I'm I'm able to do all the flailing and <laughs> everything about that in psychodrama, um, which I just did actually. <laughs> and, um, you know, and be witness there. Yeah. And it just makes a world of difference, you know, because then I can come back into my real life and uh, behave as an adult. When you say psychodrama, you mean like an encounter group? <clears throat> an actual, yeah, it's a psychodrama, um, experiential psychotherapy with the whole um, process of. Yeah. Being, uh, working through a drama. 
Yeah, we did that in the past work, uh, you know, a lot. It's the same kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, is there any particular school that that is, that is part of? You know, like a, an institute? Well, Beverly, you could probably explain this better than, than I can. <laughs> yeah, um, our, our trainer has an institute in the city called Creative Arts, what's it called? Creative Arts Therapy Institute? Yeah, yeah. So, and she does workshops and she trains people in psychodrama and she does workshops for people online and in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The psychodrama process d developed by uh, Moreno. What was his first name? J.L. Moreno, yeah. J.L. Moreno, yeah. Yeah. Well, we used to do a lot of that in the pathwork, in pathwork groups, you know, people would role play, you know, you'd be a child and somebody would be your mother and you'd react to the, the mother in the way that you did when you were a child. And, uh, you know, a lot of emotions would come up. Um, and this core energetics, you know, that creates a lot of feelings too, when you are able to put your body in various stress positions and all of a sudden you, you feel you're really angry. You don't really know why. And then sometimes you get into it and then you make a connection. Hey, wait a second. I'm angry now and I just remembered something when I was like five years old and I didn't get what I wanted. And now I'm really angry and I didn't make the connection until, you know, when I was 60, all of a sudden, hey, wait a second. So, and, and the core energetic theory, of course, bioenergetics is that you, you hold these, um, you repress these feelings and you hold them in your musculature so that in certain ways you embed the trauma in your body and you don't, ex and you aren't able to release it. You are, you can release it with exercises and with role-playing and things like that. But the, these kind of feelings get, if they're not, as the guide says, the streamings, if you're not felt in a kind of pleasure, gentle way and, and uh, not, you know, in a way that's not intimidating, uh, they can be hardened and kind of calcified and they become part of your, what the, Reich called it muscular armoring, you know, which is a, something that is designed to suppress your emotions. Certain emotions do not get felt. And instead you kind of armor against, you armor, you're armored against them. Um, yeah. Anyone else in cyberspace want to uh, comment about the lecture on real and false meets? I wanted to say something about it. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it just occurs to me that kids need different things. Kids have real needs at different developmental stages. Yes. So always, they always need something different. And th there's no parent that's perfect. So kids are always going to be getting their needs thwarted because the, the parent can't be perfect, which means that we all grow up raw <laughs> with all of our needs not met because that's kind of by definition being human so it's just like at what point i mean it's just so overwhelmingly huge the, the amount of needs that that don't get met and how and i guess it just kind of coalesces into these defenses or these structures that you're describing yeah it's it's it really is really huge and you're right i mean and also the need to be seen in your uniqueness, which the guy talks about. Now, how many times do busy parents not have the time to really appreciate the uniqueness of their child? A lot. I can still remember some instances like when like I wrote something that I thought was really great. Hey, dad, you know, this is a really great thing I just wrote. Okay, I'll read it later. Or, well, I don't think it's so great, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Like when you really want to be seen, but the, this is the reason why, you know, kids get gold stars. And when you bring back your spelling, 90% on the spelling there, your mother says, wow, that's really great. You really could spell all those words. You got a gold star. Wow. <laughs> so that's appreciating your uniqueness, right? And how many times do you not get appreciated for who you are? That's so interesting, right? Because everyone is unique. And I think there's a, such a deep need that people have to 
they want their uniqueness to be appreciated by someone else. I mean, isn't that what, you know, you're looking for in like relationships? And like when, when you get scammed, you know, the guy says, oh, you're really a wonderful, unique person. I've never seen anyone like you, Tracy. You're just amazing. And because you have this, but <laughs> obviously it's not happening, but you know, your uniqueness is such a powerful thing to say you are special. And when, when parents don't say that, right, it's hurtful. Yeah, I mean, you're really describing the trajectory of a false need, you know, the, then, then how you grow needing, needing approval from everywhere because you don't get that, that, that initial just being seen for your uniqueness. And then everywhere you go, you're just starving to be yeah, yeah. seen. So the false need, that's a good illustration. And to be validated. Validated. Uh, but this is what's interesting to me because a full, you know, how close they are in certain in certain cases a real need and then the false need in, in terms of you know trying to pin um really pinpoint what you know what is is a false need you know what what's happening in your life it's causing extreme distress and it's like it's so hard to tease out what was what's real and what isn't sometimes mm -hmm. Yeah. So one one thing I did want to add, Alan, was that uh, in uh, originally, well, well, we're hitting on a a great <laughs> a wide variety of situations, which was awesome. Here, first off, I really appreciate the openness and the honesty that was expressed from everyone. Um, one of the things that I guess in Tracy's situation that I didn't necessarily hear mentioned, uh, but was I think how it came to me was. Initially, yeah, pain exists, and I wouldn't necessarily call that a need, real or otherwise, that was unfulfilled. It was a desire, is what I would typically have called that. It was a desire to obviously um, have connection and to, you know, have that special moment, of course, um, on Mother's Day, which is a very real desire and a very honest one, a very normal one, right? It's uh, it's what it is, but um, but it's when desires are unfulfilled that, um, like Tracy was saying, we could shift it to a different and displace it. And then it becomes very clear that that's a false need, like going to the restaurant and demanding to get in. But there's also a way that a desire can move into a false need without changing any form. And it's very kind of, it's very easy for it to turn from a simple desire and a simple like, unfulfillment and sadness and then you if you don't express it and whatnot like we talked about it turns into the demand like i you know i must have that right or i must have them either apologize or i must have them recognize that they were wrong and it could just take that freight train straight ahead and not shift to something else and i think that's important because otherwise we may mislabel sometimes the initial want or the initial desire as a need, but it's not. It's not a need either way. You know, it may be, but if it's obviously something that a child is relying on. But when it comes to an adult, I think the lecture's pretty clear that the needs of an adult, um, when you really come down to what their needs are, most of them, if not all of them, are from within. And they're, as Tracy mentioned, it's, uh, or even Teresa, I think, said, that they are maintained in relationship, right, with each other. So there's a give and take, there's an understanding where other people are at and so forth. Mm -hmm. But just adding that one little term of, it's everyone has desires and everyone gets their desires not met, just like we said. And those desires don't necessarily need to be labeled needs per se. They're just desires, okay? They're just, I wish that would have happened many times. And that's enough to cause us pain and I think that the guide's pretty explicit here in saying that pain will exist, disappointments will exist, and that's normal. And it's how we take that pain and make it either hard pain or soft pain. Because when we can allow ourselves to be soft with it, then we can relax into it and not take it as seriously as we, as our demands or our insistence might want. So by expressing it, we can relax that insistence and then we may not need to displace it. We may not need to um, escalate it, I think, like uh, Jordan was saying, 
that that escalation process is another way we can do it but yeah i mean having unmet desires is i think part of just being here like all the time um the other side of the coin i guess i wanted to add one other thing too um is um back about our parents um I know that in the lecture here, it was brought up a few different ways tonight. Uh, Beverly really kind of brought it up nicely, I think, about just, it's kind of like, it's an obvious conclusion that we're gonna end up <laughs> having difficulties from our parents because they were, you know, they themselves are, um, are human, right? And there's gonna be some things that we're just not gonna be able to be fulfilled, our desires. But um, there's a quote on page three that kind of helped me when I read that. It said, uh, thus a set of parents or a certain environment will seem to be responsible for painful experience in childhood. But actually the undeveloped state of the parents functions as a means to bring out images which would otherwise remain dormant and inaccessible to consciousness, thereby blocking your own growth, your total purification. So. There was a cartoon I remember seeing from one of my coworkers, and it said, uh, you know, there's a little boy and a father, and the boy goes, well, you know, dad, why is the sky blue? And he says, because you've been bad, son. And at the bottom of it, it stated that my father's sense of humor took a lifetime of therapy to appreciate, okay? And there's a lot of that, I think, in various forms, because, like, at th but that's the way of really seeing it. If we can at some point look back to our parents more and more increasingly in time and not only forgive them for their humanity, but actually appreciate that side of it and go, wow, that really helped me, even though it was painful at the time, that really helped me own up to something that was a shadow within myself and that this was for you know a, a wonderful thing now looking back that I could say, yes, that situation, yeah, I'm kind of glad mom was not perfect there because that really brought up something in me that I needed healing. So yeah, it's looking back with appreciation on your parents more than looking back with unfulfillment as an adult that I think is probably the, uh, the way it catalyzes and changes more. Okay, that's all I had. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of food for thoughts there, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, one, you wanted to. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to something. say, I mean, from, from my own uh, experience and point of view, um, the, the, you know, to me, the starting point to, to, to resolve, uh, you know, most of these issues, uh, psychological issues, emotional issues that we have, uh, is as the guy very often points out, uh, to me, the starting point is that assuming you know self responsibility you know what i mean yes. just like first it's like okay what's going on here why am i expecting this uh, you know what i need from others outside of myself you know i think in my own experience forgive me if i sound harsh here but um i have learned i mean I, and there's a saying actually is that wise men confucio actually said a wise person expects everything from himself or herself nothing from the favor of others so I think when you really develop to the point, if I can use that word, where you really expect everything from yourself. And really, I mean, like in your case, for example, you, you're expecting your daughter to behave in a certain way that she was maybe not capable for whatever the reason or not able to do it. So you're expecting things from outside yourself. You know what I mean? And, 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 and because it was not provided, either, either it was a need or, or desire, you know, whatever it was, it was coming from outside. You expect it to come from outside. And unfortunately, that's not it. That's not always going to happen. It's for sure. If we be learn to just like really get to that point where, okay, you know, whatever is given me from the outside is extra, basically. I will learn to, I'm going to practice to, uh, you know, to weigh and expect everything from myself, from my own effort. What I cannot get there, then, then you know, I just won't have it. You know, maybe. Oh, I guess I, I would accept the fact that uh, I am not um, at, at the point to, to, or I'm not at the point to to have that yet. Uh, and another point is, I think this is very, very important here with my work, is the, the observation of the feeling. It's like really, and the guy also very often emphasized that 
you know, just sitting with that feeling, like in your case. And the guy clearly says here, um, in, on page seven, the last or the last sentence on the first part, in the last in the first paragraph, he said, "Hard pain is the result is a result of fighting against what is. We have trouble accepting what is." It's like, well, the thing is, the reality of it is, your daughter, for whatever the reason, was not here. But you, you know, you fight against that. You you don't want to accept that. So basically, self responsibility, uh, observation, and acceptance. When if we, you know, uh, in every situation where we find ourselves uh, being discomfort, experiencing pain, and not getting what we want, if we just kind of sit back and and, and really be able to remember that it's like, okay, who is responsible here? Uh, why, you know, and, and just observe what it is that you are feeling. Why am I feeling this way? Um, why am I expecting things from outside? Like, like he says here, that the acceptance of that, uh, of that, um, of that reality of of what is just being able to say like okay i wanted this that or the other but that's 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 not happening what is what is what is it that is here what is going on here in this present moment you know then this is it and if you accept that um i think you know life becomes so much easier and you know and, and you really uh do nice and smooth selling if you don't expect much from others and expect and we learn to really um uh, accustom ourselves uh to expect more from ourselves than and, and be able to provide that. And another thing is like, like questioning, like why, why was it in you that you needed your daughter that so much, that it means so much to you that your daughter come and shows with, with external behavior or gifts or whatever it was that she loves you. When you yourself even said that, you know, you know for sure that she loves you. And I'm sure you, you know, you do because, you know, I, you know she is a good daughter and everything. And she, I'm sure numerous of times she has shown you this in so many other ways, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes at that moment when we are in this emotional uh, uh, situation, we, we forget all that, you know, and it, mm -hmm. it's, it's so, um, hmm. anyway, so that was just my point. Uh, no, uh, I, yeah, I, I yeah. think what you bring yeah. is very important. It's yeah. so important to remember yeah. that, you know, you don't know, your ego cannot plan how you're going to feel when whatever you're thinking about actually right. happens. Exactly. You can. Right? Mm -hmm. You're going to meet somebody, you have all kinds of theories about this and what it's going to be like. It, mm -hmm. it has to be this way or it doesn't have to be that way. You don't know what it's going to be like until you get there. Right. And unless you are totally bedeviled by this whole gigantic superstructure of shoulds and musts and cans and images and this mm -hmm. and that, unless you are a slave to basically all your preconceptions, yeah. You're preventing yourself from feeling and experiencing what it is right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And think, think about yourself, like what was going on? If you observe yourself, I'm sure, if you go deep in there and to yourself and you see, you will see a whole, whole bunch of judgment and labeling going on. Yeah. Right? At that yeah. time, wasn't it? Yeah. Because that's what you do. And then, because when you expect things from others and they don't give you what you want, then you start judging, labeling. Yes. Uh, but another uh, blaming, you know. And, and all these other things take place, like you said, because the ego, we have no control how they're going to be able to do right. that. But if we just learn to accept what comes, what is in the here and, and now. That's, that's such a meditation to be <laughs> Very in the moment, what's going on right now. Because really, um, <clears throat> it's the famous, um, you can't step into the same stream twice. That's right. You, can. you know, whenever, whenever you step into that stream, it's unique. Mm -hmm. It's not the same. It's not the same. So you anymore. don't know what the configuration is when you're until you're there right and if you can respond to what it is at, in the moment right then you're instead of expecting these or that the other to be different yeah you know it's, yeah. it's not easy but it's, it's, it can be done with the... well what, Juan, what you're saying brings up a big ish, big thing for me um that this uh, uh about um self-responsibility mm. What I what what I find so difficult. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to express this, but um, mm -hmm. I'm going to try. Um, so um, our needs, like if our needs in childhood, are formed through relationship with the caregivers, right? And mm -hmm. like in my case, like my life formed with a lot of isolation. So I always I always have a lot of confusion about um uh the idea of self-responsibility um 
versus the idea of what we actually need from other people because human beings need we're interdependent and we yes. need each other right yes so for certain and it's what i think the personality types like for whatever I, mine is it's like i um kind of groove feeling like i i can't um connect with uh, with with other people that it's like a big need to deny mm. what you know relationship needs for relationship and intimacy clo actual closeness and close interaction with law brotherhood that's the spiritual law mm -hmm. say again i said the law of brotherhood that's a spiritual law yes we need yeah. that yeah. Like human interaction yeah and so th there are those of us who really you know who really have like um the the defense mm. has been a lot to not have not not have certain inter just not have a lot of interactions. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, what I think what you describe in there is this is usually the problem, I think, with most of us, you know, we uh, tend to uh, concentrate too much on the effects, uh, what comes up to the surface, you see, and these are the effects. Uh, and I think that very often we, we confuse the actual cause, which always lies even underneath in the unconscious. And we, we tend to we focus too much on the effect on what comes to the surface. So I think when you feel this uh, void and this emptiness, uh, I think we, 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 it's a good thing, in my case, it's what I practice, uh, to write, really try to use the effect to trace the cause, like what's going on here? Okay, this is what I see, this is what's coming to the surface, this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm experiencing, this is what I am going through. Underneath of that is a cause, it's always a cause. There is no effect without a cause, right? We all know that. So uh, when we try, rather than confusing ourselves and getting all lost on the effects that are surfacing, and we try to just focus really on uh, what's underneath of that, uh, it is much easier to, to resolve uh, the issues. And you know, and we go to meditation, we ask for divine help, we pray, and uh, you know, and, and really uh, in the search to, to connect uh, with that cause that lies hidden underneath, which is always there. Can, can I? Yeah, Barbara. I, I just, I, I relate to what you're talking about, Ellen, right now um, in my situation, you know, I lost my husband. And so I, um, you know, it's sort of like the need for companionship and connection, um, you know, com comes up a lot. And I, also for me, I'm realizing that um, I really, I, I want, um, I, don't know, I want to feel like that someone really wants to see me or that they want to embrace me or that they really, you know, I want them to be there for me. And um, so my, my, and I do have like a sort of like a wide network of people that I know. And I, I do feel fortunate that I've been able to have some interactions in my life. And, you know, I also have family, but the thing I wanted to say was that I'm an artist and so they have these openings, you know, that you go to where, um, you, you, you know, you want to go to support your friends or people, you know, who are making, who are in the show, but it's also like this networking thing where people go there to see like who they can connect with, but in a business way, you know, like, oh, you know, and so they'll be talking to you and they're like looking over your shoulder, like to see who else they want to talk to. And so I, I can't deal with that right now. You know, I, I just feel like I'm not, you know, maybe I can, at other times I can have a social skill or what, whatever, but right now in my life, I, I was able to understand that, no, I want to like really make my interactions in places where I can feel like I'm, I really, and you know, want to be with people who are happy to see me. And um, the thing that I want to get to is that I also really connected with, it's very, it's connected to this idea of like getting it from the outside. But I realized that I've got to find that place in myself where I want to see those people, where I want to love them and I want to listen to them. And, you know, so um that's 
you know, something I'm experiencing. The other thing is how um, uh, trying to get in touch with my generosity, because, you know, I, um, I've been feeling vulnerable and I, you know, people have been generous with me in, in things, but it's almost this feeling of like, I really, um, you know, where I'm, for me to be receptive, I also have to be able to give and, you know, looking to where I can um, be um, generous from a place that, you know, um, feels I have it to give and being aware of like, I, I don't. So that's, I just um, related to things that you were saying. And I think that's how it connects with me. Very emotional listening to you. So is this, you know, something, something um, important and, you know, I guess there's just, I guess I'll be just further vulnerable and just say it's like just the feeling of like having getting closer in this discussion to like a real my what my real experience is, you know, because I'm very emotional and I'm very sensitive and um, and I I'm usually only getting to really experience that by myself. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know, just, it's just a moment where I feel like this is the heart of what, you know, I don't know what the need, like the original need, like what, what it is, but there's something extremely deep and powerful about how much isolation and also Barbara just, you know, again, I relate to you because of, you know, being an artist and I'm a, I'm a musical artist and that so much of the deep need is to share my music. Mm -hmm and um you know and in in, 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 in in intimacy there's an intimacy to that you know i don't want to just you know just be a performer on stage with you know i, I really it's it's on my way of Connect. really sharing yeah. my deepest self with the world mm -hmm. and with individuals you know they, it's, so that's it's, certainly a real need that's a real, real thing yeah yeah <clears throat> Feel free to express uh, yourself and what you feel here. That's what this group is about, you know. <laughs> we won't judge you, we won't label you, we won't label you. We just uh, we just listen and you know look to be and seek to be understanding. So it's all good. So let it out, let it out. <laughs> Thank you, Juan. Thanks for saying that. Of course. It's just one other thing that you know, a lot of things you say just always touch me, Ellen, that the, um, you know, losing Bill, um, I've been in touch with this part of like, really trying to take good care of myself. And, um, you know, and, you know, doing good, like dental hygiene, and, you know, and feeling like I'm, you know, taking, you know, and like eating well, um, being sensitive to myself, you know, and 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 feeling good about that that yeah that sounds like a real need too yeah mm -hmm. the things you feel good <laughs> the powerful adult need you know i think that which stems from you know it's like some we have trouble i do think that well often at least you know we didn't learn that and so it's such a big important learning self-care especially in times of a vulnerability and then when 12 step programs it's always like the number one thing self-care yeah i do really like that list of adult needs right self-expression growth development yeah. reaching one's spiritual potential and everything that accrues from that this means pleasure love fulfillment good relationships and a meaningful contribution to the great plan in which everyone has his or her task mm -hmm. you feel her task huh? so we all have one <laughs> I just wanted to add that, yeah, that Teresa. Way. You know, um, mm -hmm. you're saying talking about expressing it in the group. I think Moshe said about that it's holding the space for it, you know, and allowing it to just yeah. that's part of our need too. That's why we're all here in this group, trying so to helpful. whatever good relationships, fulfilling our task, you know, we're all here doing this and part of it is to just be the witness and hold the space. Mm -hmm. 
So without judgment, do the best we can with that. So we appreciate you bringing you. forward. All right, thank you. Um, is there anyone else who wants to say something about um, the subject? Any thoughts? Uh, you know, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, should go ahead. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that this, that's going to be subject because I got, I don't know why I got the, the 129. Maybe that was a, a long ago. So I didn't read, but you know, it's it's amazing. I mean, what you said and in the book that just happened to be, it's oh, yeah. because underneath anger or underneath uncomfortable emotions, there is unmet need. Mm -hmm. Yes, now right. yes, I, yes. I, I framed it in a very, very different way. And rather than and the idea of uh, kind of like false need, and really this very confusing and very difficult to, to, to decipher, but I think the attitude that we bring to, to the need would define it as, <clears throat> as real or not real. And that's exactly as you define it, the uh, one. And, and again, I, I define three principles it's personal responsibility. Mm -hmm non-judgmental mindfulness about just accepting what it is yes. and cultivation of compassion. Mm -hmm. So if we are able to, to kind of like really act based on that toward everybody, mm -hmm. then we create what I call creating a value in the universe, in the world, yep. which is love, yeah. which is ultimately love. So if we are able to do that, regardless if it's false, so what is within our power? How can we accept that reality why we, you know, we, we don't come with demands and changing the projection from the outside, from your daughter, from my wife, from my ex, whoever it is, to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Then we find the uncovering the the true, you know, kind of like needs. Yes. yes. And really understand what is missing within us. Right. So anyway, that was. Uh, Wait, say those three yeah, what you said. Say the three things you said. Personal responsibility. Personal responsibility. That, that's our feeling. Now right. we need to deal with that. Right. Non judgmental mindfulness. Right. Just accepting what is without judgment. Right. Yes. Right. Kind of like really allowing it to be feelings, thoughts, whatever it is. And the other aspect is a cultivation of Cult compassion. Of compassion. Yeah. And, and I developed that concept called compassionate warrior. Oh, that's a good mm -hmm. one. Because the, when, when you have unfilled, you know, what is warrior? Where you want to do what is right, what is just. But sometimes we forget. We just go full force. We forget the compassionate aspect. Mm -hmm. It's kind of balancing that and creating kind of love. Right. Anyway, yeah, it. it's very valuable. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Is there anyone else <laughs> who wants to talk about uh, comment? Talk about this lecture? Any thoughts? Gentleman, data has not uh, said much. I don't know if he wants. James, to. you want to uh, <laughs> weigh in on this one? Well, I'll put it down. well he came yeah, along for the ride. Yeah, go ahead. All right, all right, you're on Kevin Kelly. I was thinking about the pers different personality types. So if you have the reason person and he's uh, got wisdom and withdrawal versus the, the uh, will person, which is, you know, um, courage and aggression, how do they deal differently with fulfilling their needs? And uh, I'm emotion. She will. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's it. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, we certainly touched a lot of issues tonight. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this lecture is very, it's very powerful. Yeah. yeah. There's so much uh, constructive material here. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like almost, almost a lot of the aspects of the path work are yeah. in this lecture. You know? It's dense, right? It's dense. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, shall we have our meditation? Uh, my friends, okay. Do you have a candle? I do. You have a I have a candle that's just is, is oh we've got a candle here. Okay, you do. Okay, okay. Okay, All right. Ready to 
All right, I'll read a small paragraph. Most of you start with a negative goal. You want to remove a negative condition. Only rarely does an individual start out with a positive goal. Many may pay lip service to the positive goal of total self-purification and spiritual growth. But when it comes to having the willingness to accept difficulties, to giving up long established destructive patterns, the conscious commitment to the positive goal suddenly disappears. With most, the positive goal is pursued and strengthened only as you get deeper into yourself. The longing is always there. Something in your deepest innermost being knows that there exists another reality and another state of consciousness than your present state of development. Your reaching for this higher, more fulfilling state is a legitimate, healthy need. All right, 15 minutes. Do you want me to put somebody put the timer on? Or I'll, I'll do it. Okay.